Hi, we're Tony and Chelsea, and this is episode 17 of News, Booze, and Reviews. That's right. We're going to cover photo news. We're going to answer some questions from our viewers, and then we're going to review your pictures. But first, I'd like to mention that this episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your professional website or online portfolio. And if you'd like to give that a try, go to squarespace.com slash Tony and use the coupon code... Photo news. You're so good at that. Photo news. That's Squarespace. So we watched the movie In a World, and now Chelsea really wants to sound like an announcer. Squarespace. We're way overthinking our voices now. Squarespace. But it's a good movie. Check it out. In a, In a World. I'm good at it. I'm leaving this job. <laughs> you news. got some news? I got news. Go we were it. talking about the Panasonic GH4. Yeah, I'm really jazzed about that camera. 4K video, what, like 1700 bucks, I think? 1600 bucks? Yeah, it's $1,700 for the yeah. body only. And it's available for pre-order now, and they'll be shipping early May. Yeah, we just put in a pre-order for one. So in the very least, we'll do a review of it, but I think it might become our new kind of on-the-go camera. I'd love to be able to do 4K video. That sounds oh. exciting. Micro four thirds, which means it's nice and tiny. Little tiny, teeny tiny lenses for it. Oh, and there's such a good variety of micro four thirds lenses out there. Yeah, it sounds like we'll have a good video coming up for that soon then. Yeah. Okay. How about you? You have any news? Yeah, you know, some of you saw the preview that I put up of the D4S, the new Nikon high-end pro body. And DxO Mark just tested the sensor on the D4S and they came back with some surprising results. It's no terrible. better. <laughs> what? Really? I was It's not joking. terrible. It's just not any better than the previous generation that the D4 was. Well, is that it's are they good. claiming? Are they claiming that it was supposed to be better? Yeah. You know, I'm not going to try to quote Nikon's marketing material, but everybody was kind of expecting it to be one stop better in image quality. Okay. And they did have some comparison pictures up, but maybe they were JPEGs as opposed to RAWs. So sometimes what they do is they improve the JPEG processing, but I think just about any pro is going to be shooting raw files Who anyway. buys a camera that expensive and then relies on JPEG processing? Uh, the only reason I could think is if you were running out of storage space because, you know, it does 11 frames a second. Yeah. So you could be taking thousands of pictures pretty fast. That's the only reason. But most people are going to be shooting raw. So basically, same image quality and uh, the other improvements were pretty, pretty minor. So, yeah, it's not a huge upgrade. I don't think we're going to be doing a review of it or anything. It just doesn't seem... That's substantial. No. We'll wait for the D5. Okay. Good plan. I'm on board. Speaking of DxO Mark, every time I quote DxO Mark for lenses or sensors or something, I get all these angry comments saying, oh, DxO Mark is biased or they lie. Or they're Are clearly they? sponsored by Nikon or Sony. No. Well, that's what I, I'm asking people. I want, tell me why I can't trust DxO Mark because I've looked into their methodology and they seem very precise and very scientific and they seem very trustworthy. And people throw out these claims that they're liars and they're sponsored, but they never, I've never seen any evidence to that effect. Nobody has ever said, well, because there's this flaw in their methodology, which produces incorrect results or the results aren't gonna be applicable. You're upset that people on YouTube aren't logical. <laughs> I have yet to see a logical argument on YouTube. Yeah. Usually this is what happens. Someone has the camera and they already invested in it and have some emotional attachment and then they can't, they can't stand to hear any negative things about it. Or I don't care. If I can't if I found out something bad about my camera, I'd be like, I made it work. I can move on from this. Yeah, that definitely happened. So we've been using Fujifilm cameras lately, so I was a little bit excited to hear that they're coming out with a skin. Or actually they already have it. You can go on their site, you can choose your a model of Fujifilm camera that you have, and then you can buy a cover for it. But I don't know. At first I thought it was neat, but it's 130 pounds. That's like 216 US dollars if it were available in the US. You have to send your camera to Fuji and then they put your cover on it. A technician does. He also cleans your camera. He or she also cleans your camera and makes sure that it's working properly. But that seems expensive. Yeah. And you also have to send your camera away and be apart from it. Why can't we do that in the US? Like Americans aren't ready to stick leather stickers on their cameras? I don't think they're stickers. I don't think they're leather either because they call it skin. Like. They usually advertise if something's leather. I saw a few that looked okay, but mostly they're just kind of bright green lizard skin or blue crocodile or something. It's pretty funky. I it's think that's neat. a thing. Like it's cameras neat. have been ugly for a really long time. I think it's time that they start to become like watches, like they're gonna be accessories, like some of the new mirrorless cameras. Well, Leica does that, but then you have to pay $30,000. Yeah. And there are three of them. 
but in existence. Like that little Olympus OMD 10, mm -hmm. it's cool looking. And it's oh, only yeah. like 700, 800 bucks. I, I felt like when I had it on my shoulder, like I was a little bit cooler. You felt cool? Yeah. You looked, I'm just saying, I think cameras cool. can become a fashion accessory. They don't have to be ugly monstrosities like they have been. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's true. 2013 was not a good year for camera sales. Camera shipments dropped 40% and lens shipments dropped 20%. And I think part of this is everybody's using their cell phones now. Yeah, probably. And they're building Wi-Fi into cameras nowadays, but it still requires like an extra five steps if you're gonna put it on Facebook. That'll be one big thing that'll make camera sales pick up is yeah. make it go right from your camera to Facebook without ridiculous setup processes. Or Every single camera Instagram. manufacturer is a pain yeah. to get that stuff on Facebook. Way more than from your iPhone. That's so true. let's make them a little more social, a little better network, but also there just haven't been any big technological improvements. Yeah, we were talking about, and why buy a new camera if they haven't improved that much, so. Yeah, all these new cameras and just tiny little improvements, like the D4, the sensor didn't even get better. How many pros are gonna upgrade if the sensor doesn't get better? So it's like computers, you know, they're not doubling in performance anymore every year. Yeah, this is a cool infographic. We should show that to them. Yeah. They can put that up. Okay, we have some new stuff. Nikon sent us over the D5300. So we will do a review of this and specifically a comparison to the D3300. So stay tuned for that. I mean, it's got the flippy screen, which flippy I love. Screen. And a much better autofocus system. So those are gonna be the, the real big improvements. It's a nice little camera. I'm excited to try that out. The other camera I can't show you because it's currently filming and that's the Panasonic GH2, which is not at all a new camera. <laughs> but it, it happens to be an extremely good video camera for the type of work that we do here in the studio. So it will sit there and run all day. Whereas every DSLR we have shuts off after 30 minutes. I because know. of some stupid European Law taxation. Yeah. It'll keep running forever. And it has excellent image quality and access to the full like micro four thirds lenses. So I don't think you'll ever notice any difference in image quality, but it'll be a lot better for us. That's exciting. Exciting stuff. I can sense their, their excitement. Yeah, everybody's really jazzed like, about oh. our own infrastructure oh. upgrades. <laughs> They're gonna be slightly more efficient in their workflow. Yes. <laughs> I don't even know why I brought that up. Let's start my favorite segment, Chit Chat. Oh, we have some comments from Let readers. Let me read to you. I this hope one. they're nice. Well, I'll read Jimmy's. Okay. Jimmy says, hello, Tony. I just want to say that your site and video is amazing. I just bought the Kindle how to create stunning photo, but where's all the videos? Best regards, Jimmy. I wanted you to answer Jimmy's question because I think a lot of people get confused about the videos in the book. Yeah, some people think they're supposed to get a, a DVD or something, but the yeah. videos are embedded online. So you can, if you have a Kindle, you can watch them right on your, a color Kindle device. Yeah. But they're all accessed online. So right in the introduction, you'll see a short URL that you can type, a QR code that you can scan with your phone, and a link that you can click if you're using a device that can play videos natively. So it's all accessed through our own SDP community website. And most of the videos are ones that are not on YouTube. So if you have the book, remember, there are original videos, so be sure to access them. Yeah, over nine hours of video, it's not like this where we kind of ramble on. It's really tight, fast-paced stuff. Most of it's five minutes in length. Yeah. Okay, this next one <clears throat> is from Silky Johnson, and I had been wondering the same thing as Silky Johnson. Tony, have you gotten more handsome? <laughs> well, thanks for asking, Silky. Um, yes, the consensus is yes. I think that you've been <laughs> aging well. Oh, well, thanks. And I saw your license photo from when you were 18, and I think you actually are getting more handsome. So, Silky, you're onto something. You're right. He is getting more handsome. We'll have to have Justin show my that prom photo that I dug up today. Oh, mm, <laughs> we might get a lot of unsubscribes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, this one is from My Views. Okay, where can I find the buying guide? go to stp.io slash buy BG. Or you can get it at Amazon. Yeah. We get that question a few times, so. But it ships worldwide and get paperback or ebook, whichever you prefer. This one isn't a question, but I just felt like I needed to read this to you. Mm -hmm. It's from Luc de Rouver. Boring. My five-year-old pucked after a one minute of the slime. <laughs> <laughs> pucked? I think he meant puked, but I, I try to read it as it's written. And you know, I don't actually feel responsible for this. We have a clear warning on our website, might make five-year-olds puke. No one 
five or under should watch it. And so I feel like he's actually responsible for the puking five-year-old. Yeah, it's your your jitteriness can cause nausea. I cause motion sickness, all (laughs) the spazziness. I guess it's my fault. And this last one is my favorite, and it's from Gerard. Good video. I did watch it to the very end. I like the unpretentiousness of y'all, though you do seem to know what the f*** y'all are talking about. (laughs) I I wonder where he's from. He's from where you're Uh, from. Queens, New York? He's from the South. And I love that he's, like, so nice. And also, like, there's a little bit of gruffness in there. Yeah, that's that's every Southern boy that I knew, pretty much. Thank you, Gerard. <laughs> I really liked that. That made my day, that comment. Yes, thank you. Tony, I'm having so much fun. And you know who's letting me have all of this fun? Me. You. I'm such a kind husband. I let you do stuff. That's kind of sexist. Uh. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for creating a fast and easy website or portfolio. And you know what? They have 24-7 customer support. My portfolio's on it, your portfolio's on it, and we've even gotten... Our, our marketing person, Samantha, her portfolio is on it. Uh, Justin, Justin, our cameraman, set did up you his portfolio one? on it. Um, did, but never completed it. <laughs> Justin's is a work in progress. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Actually, when I first made mine, it took me a while to finish it because there are a lot of options. Yeah. It's pretty fun to set it up, so I changed my layout style a few times, and I went through and just played around. I had fun with it. Yeah, it is a lot of fun, and even if you don't have serious ambitions, I'd, I'd go ahead and set up a trial one and just load your pictures in. So that'll do a couple of things. One, it'll make your pictures look really cool because they have very cool templates. Yeah. But also force you to go through that process of weeding out your pictures and just picking your, you know, 10 to 15 best pictures in each different category and organizing them. And that in itself can make you a better photographer. We have a whole video on setting I, up your You know what? Portfolio. It also kind of inspired out. me to shoot more pictures of things that I thought I was doing more of, but I realized I didn't have enough pictures in my portfolio. Yeah, sometimes so, you only have like three pictures in a good in a category that you want to be good at. Yeah. It's really important to organize your pictures. It makes you a better photographer. Yeah, it was a good experience. Yeah, so check that out. It's completely free, no credit card required for the 14-day trial. So you can just go have fun with it. And then if you want to continue using it and, and keep it online, they start out $8 really a inexpensive, month. like $8 a month. And we can yeah. give you 10% off if you use the coupon code Photo news. Yeah. So go to squarespace.com slash Tony, coupon code photo news. And it's not just portfolio stuff. So if you, in your other life where you're not a professional photographer, if you're a, a lawyer. Oh, no. Are the person that designed our set? Uh huh. I was telling her about her sponsorship and she said, Squarespace, I love Squarespace. She uses it for her store. Yeah. Uh, Bank and Pearl. So, Justin, you can put that in the video here so they can see it. It looks great. It's really beautiful. So, yeah. Yeah, Not just for every site comes with e-commerce too. So yeah. if you're just looking to set up a store, that's a great place to start. It's cheaper and better than anything else. Yeah, I've okay. tried everything. Um, we're gonna do a new segment, right? Yeah, I think we're calling it "Stop It." Stop it! Stop that's it! What we're calling it because we see thousands of pictures a day. We see so many pictures. I don't, I'm not even sure that I like pictures anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but we see so many that are the same, and we see the same mistakes over and over again. And so our readers were generous enough to donate their bad pictures to us from when sacrifice they sacrifice their they pictures. Sacrifice basically, sacrifice their pictures. I even <laughs> and told their egos. them we're going to rip them apart. If you're willing to send them to us, we're going to use you as an example of what not to do. Let's break out that laptop. Let's do it. Okay. So our first picture. The first thing that I notice is that. They're really close to the wall. They get a lot of really hard direct flash, and those are just new news. Stop it! You put the flash on the camera, and you <laughs> turn the camera it. sideways. Stop and it. that makes this flash along the right side of the picture. Stop it! Just stop it. And you know what else while we're there? We see this a lot, too. Stop cutting off people in the wrong place when you crop them. You can't crop off someone's elbow vignetting. Oh, stop it. Just stop vignetting everything. I mean, I don't know. I I understand it. Like, you didn't quite hone in on the subjects. You feel like in post-processing, you can just go in there and add a vignette, and everyone will know what you were looking at, but... I don't even know what this is going for. This isn't an old-timey saloon. It's like a peephole, and you're looking at people's shoes through the... You know what? This would be great for, like, a foot fetish site. Like, they'd be like, God damn, vignette and V. Oh, my God. Babies. Just stop making babies. (laughs) (laughs) Nah, I'm just kidding. 
kidding. You really have to stop. I see this all the time. People post pictures of their baby flicking off the camera and that's cliche. See this baby? Yeah, it's this hacky move, <laughs> hacky baby. Okay, the real reason I chose this picture is that the background's really cluttered and that's a common mistake. Oh, all the time. Just look at the background. Stop it with the like the messy rooms. This isn't that bad. We see rooms where everything's just cluttered in well, the background. Well, their house is really and, clean, but sometimes And there's somebody see... up front who's like, <laughs> yeah, but that's not your subject. And... What's worse than in the, there's a woman trying to be sexy and the background is like, a tornado just all her came dirty through. laundry is She's back like there. She's like filthy. Stop it. <laughs> and and to make matters worse, the background here is in focus. Like and the, the baby's picture not. frames and the toys and stuff in are in focus. In this person's defense, that could have been a really fast baby. Yeah, he's just that duck is just flying around the room. <laughs> no auto focus system. Keep up with that finger flipping <laughs> baby. Flicking people off and <laughs> flying around the room. It's like a crazy Stop baby. It. All right, this is oh. everything. This photo is HDR night photography, busy background. And what is that weird processing? The it's processing, like, brown. like you try to do everything. And can I just tell you? There's no subject to it either. What is this subject? Is it like a carousel with trucks? Like, oh, that's fascinating. People are gonna love ATV carousel <laughs> pictures. Stop it! <laughs> Stop it with the off-road carousels. Wait. I put this in. This is one. Of, this is my very first HDR and night picture. And yeah, I you really went in. for everything, didn't I you? Except for, for subject <laughs> or composition or I went for it all. I was taste. Like, you, gonna... you didn't bother with that, but you went for everything but those things. I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna find the worst subject and I'm gonna just put every filter on it. And I see that all of the time. And it's horrible, and I don't know what I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, like you build to that. You do one thing at a time. So I put my picture in because I just want to tell you that you're still cool in my book. You're going to grow out of it, but you need to stop it. Mirror selfie, dirty mirror selfie. Handheld selfies. Handheld dirty mirror selfie with a flash. Like a 45 degree angle that's not a Dutch tilt. Just stop it. I, I see these a lot. We're not impressed. This I is like a common. I like that expression in her eyes. Like, he went to the zoo. We know that. You're not tricking me. We get it. But you didn't get eye contact. Eye contact! No, when the lion's face is right next to the edge of the frame. And why is there all this space up at the top of the frame but not below his paws? And he cut off his paw, or she. Just... We got plenty of lion pictures. We can see lions all the time. It's good to practice at the zoo, but... Oh. <laughs> What's going I on love here? This one. I don't. I forgot who this was, but she was such a good sport about how ridiculous this picture was, and uh, it made me laugh out loud. Like I don't know what happened in the moment, but someone was like, "Definitely put a scarf on your foot. It's gonna be crazy. I promise." Yeah, there's a lot of storytelling going on here. Like, what's what's the backstory to the scarf being on the foot? Just stop it. <laughs> yeah, but what's okay. with the scarf? This is the thing. This is what you need to stop. You know you want your picture to be different, that you haven't planned it out. So you think, I have a scarf, I have a foot. Let's make magic. <laughs> you have to plan it. That's all you need, a scarf and a foot. <laughs> you have to plan it out in advance. A few people know this, but that's all that Ansel Adams used. A scarf, a scarf and a foot. foot. <laughs> he actually invented that. And look at these crops with the, the arm being cut off and the arm being cut off and the foot being cut off. <laughs> <laughs> and where is she? It's like you know, the sewage treatment plant. If anything, it just shows that persistence pays off because all of these people, I chose them because they've come a really long way. Spot oh. color. Dear God, why does everyone want to do spot color all of the time? If your subject isn't clear, adding color to it isn't going to make it a better picture. If your picture is already wrong, Putting everything in black and white and then adding something in color, it's just gonna make it worse. And also that inedible candy, just stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes that candy, that ribbon candy. No, I do, I like that. No, stop it. No. Chocolate or GTFO? Candy. GTFO? <laughs> stop it. Get the funky orange? <laughs> People always fight with me about it too. They're like, trust me. Her shoes are just in color. It's deep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're, that was it? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, we, we really ripped you guys a new one. I'm glad I put mine in there so that people could see that we're just brutal with ourselves too. All right, well, if you took a terrible picture and you want us to 
make fun of it. I don't Send it to Tony at Northrop.org. I can't imagine anyone. It has to be your picture. I don't want to be. You have to subject yourself. It's gonna be the to that friends. humiliation. Yeah. No. Just your picture. Okay. Thank you. Now let's we let's go look at some people's pictures and not make fun of them. Let's provide actual constructive criticism. Yeah, but that felt so good to get that off my chest. <laughs> yeah, get it out of our system a little bit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here's the reader review. Here's our first picture. It looks like a, a lighthouse that's been covered in snow. Um, pretty gorgeous, beautiful sky. Yeah, I love the lighting and I love the contrast between the white snow and the red lighthouse. Yeah, great colors, perfect exposure on the snow, which could have been hard. You know, there's a little space here in the histogram, but I think overall it's good. No detail loss in the snow, which is the most interesting part. Looks really good. I, any yeah, suggestions for it? Thing. What's that? There's something in the snow in the bottom right corner. Oh, yeah, you'd clone that out. That's easily done. You're right, it's just a distraction. Oh, I didn't mean to hit that button. Ooh. <laughs> Nicely done. Mm. All right, a sunset picture. Quite a bit of drama here. Yeah, but overall I feel like the picture is underexposed. Yeah, I was just grabbing the exposure slider. Oh, see, just raising it up a little bit. Now we can see all these gradations in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, this is one of those things where it's going to look different on different people's monitors. Yeah. Um, that's why you have to look at the histogram, you know, going back to the original with the set to zero. Uh, what we saw was just nothing over here in the right quarter, which means it's just going to be a little bit dark. But the best results you really want to spread across the histogram. I would put the exposure up even more. Get it touching the right side of that histogram. Oh, you think so? What if I try just clipping the whites? I'm afraid I'm going to wash out those colors you too can much. You put the highlights down too. Yeah, that's true. Um, I actually think this would be a good candidate for processing an HDR software, something like Photomatix. Yeah. Um, even if you just do the single image, because that would give you just, it would just allow you to bring out more contrast in the foreground here. Yeah, it looks like they could have done a few things. Even if they didn't do HDR, um, they could have made sure that the picture was exposed a little better. You want to get it right in your camera first. Yeah. And then when you get into post-processing, anything you didn't get right, it's kind of just saving you. But you do want to get it right in the camera first. So what were there? Oh, we don't have any information. Clean up some of that noise too. Yeah, I have no idea. I know I press mm -hmm. I and it comes in and out. Everybody tells me to yeah, press I, but sometimes press it just I. doesn't show up we and I have no I. idea why. We know how to press I. I, I press I all the time. It's one of my I. favorite letters. Yeah. Yeah. Probably hundreds of times per day. <laughs> it's not working. Uh, this is a really noisy sensor, so check the video in chapter five on how to clean your sensor. There's just noise everywhere. That happens. But yeah, I do like the composition. I love the rolling mountains and there's a lot of nice texture. Wow. <laughs> that, okay, this is definitely blending of multiple different exposures, right? Because yeah, there's no way. you don't get stars down by the horizon like that. Yeah, this really pops though. And that's not a completely rural area, so we know there must be at least some light pollution. It does pop. Pop, pop. It's beautiful. Yeah, so this, this picture down here was probably taken, uh, it says 25 seconds, which is right for the stars. Um, this picture down here, well, maybe not. I, I don't know. Because I saw 125 at f4 and 25 seconds to get the stars that clear and to see the Milky Way. You, you'd have to be on like the top of that mountain on Hawaii <laughs> to get Monica. the stars. That, yeah, exactly. Um, and then down here, you, you have artificial possible? light. I mean, where are they? What is this? What are we even looking at? Is that a canal? Are those boats? I can't zoom in any further. Yeah, you're right. I think that's a canal. I mean, is it possible that that's real? The, the sky just looks strange to me. Yeah, no, look at the trees and the way it's cut out. I mean, it's an interesting idea for a comp, but I don't see a way that it's not a comp. All right, so constructive feedback. Uh, I would definitely blend the trees a little bit better. Better when you do the selection, you need to feather it. Um, another thing is when you do, uh, when you select the line between the background and the trees when you're doing a comp, um, the background shines through trees a little bit, 
So there's always a little softness to it. Trees are like the hardest thing to comp in my opinion. So just keep that in mind. Still looks good. It's a nice picture. Yeah. Good concept. Oh, it's the picture again. All right. Calba. This is very um, good use of the sun. I love the sun as a focal point. They have this very interesting structure here. Uh, it just feels a little unbalanced to me, don't you think? Yeah, I can see how you would feel that way. Maybe crop down from the right a little. Yeah, I thought I'd unlock that. Hmm, I feel like... I don't know. I like it. It's got some HDR going on. I just felt like it had a, a little too much open space on the left there. I think he was trying to go with the rule of space because this is looking out into the water. Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. All right. I, I do a crop, but otherwise I like the, I like the processing. A statue can be a difficult subject, um, but I think you made a compelling picture out of it. There's some There's icicles. God knows we've seen some cold around here lately. Interesting shot. I like that they got up close and you can see that the sun was shining through the icicles. Yeah, this can be a, a difficult subject to capture. I love the like blue cool tones that helps convey the cold too. Uh, so I think they did a, a good job of capturing it. Um, you know, maybe if the sun could have been directly behind it to provide a little bit more of a focal point. It's missing pop. Yeah, it just needs plus one other thing, don't you think? I mean, it's good for what it is, but they I guess if I'm giving it, constructive feedback. Yeah, with this shot, I think they got that shot, but if they want it to really stand out or be a portfolio photo, it needs it needs that little something extra. I think I'd also like to see all these icicles nice and sharp. You're at f5.6, but up close, that's not going to be enough, you know. But you had plenty of shutter speed left, so you could have gone to, you know, f 16. Oh, really? I actually like that there's... Oh, you like that short yeah. depth of field? Yeah. Do each of them? <laughs> okay. All right, let's do it. Wow. What a gorgeous owl. That picture's perfect. That's beautiful. What fantastic light. Mm -hmm. beautiful wow, light. beautiful texture. This owl is really annoyed by your presence, but <laughs> I think it was worth it. That's a great photo. Yeah, they can be pretty patient. No distractions. I, I mean, what constructive feedback could you give about this picture? It's just beautiful. Looks great. Uh, your settings are perfect, too. Nicely done. ISO 100 and F8. My God, you have some great light. Oh, look at that. A, a T1i. You can get that on eBay for like 200 bucks. Yeah. And then a 70 to 300 lens. These are This is consumer level equipment. You can get all this gear for uh, five or 600 bucks probably. I'm wondering if they did too much luminance. Do you see how, let me just use your mouse mm -hmm. so I can show you. Do you see how in the feathers here, how it looks very smooth, almost like a painting? Was that because of noise reduction or is that just the photo? Oh. I think you're right that there might be some noise reduction. Because on if you do noise reduction on a photo like this, you want to select the background and do the noise reduction on the background. And usually you want to keep the animal as sharp as possible. But maybe that's not the case. Maybe it's just a little bit out of focus and it looks that way. Yeah, he does have really shallow depth of field. But yeah, it, it didn't bother me at first. I, I think she, it looks nice and clean. Or he. Whatever. I've known women who are raised. Yeah, I've known women. I don't know when I thought it was a woman. All right, we have a beautiful uh, icy landscape here. Uh, got a lighthouse over there, nice rule of thirds composition. Yeah. Got stuff in the foreground that's really interesting. This picture so, I feel, it makes me feel so isolated. It's a lonely picture. Just a hair off Not level. Really? Yeah, just a hair. I mean, just look at the grid lines. You can see. Okay. Uh, I'll do that just to zoom it in a little bit. Okay. Um, maybe up the exposure a little bit. Say, Make those whites a little wider. I think we could bring up the exposure. Yeah, when we have snow and ice, I like to see it nice and bright and white. Beautiful sky, too. Yeah, I feel like the midtones are a little hot. Or, you know, maybe it needs more contrast. I now, usually if you do contrast on a photo like this, it's going to make those rocks too dark. Let's say you lose, I don't usually like that contrast slider. 
Yeah, I almost never use it. No, I don't like it. I've never, I've just never found it to do anything good. I like to go down and mess with the highlights and shadows instead. See, I would bring up the exposure and then bring down the highlights so you don't blow out the snow, but you still brighten up the picture. Let's see. I don't know how you use a mouse, you know that? <laughs> All right, nicely done. Beautiful no big picture. feedback on it. No, no. Cute puppy here. It's a fun uh, picture to play with, that, yeah. the lighthouse picture. Yeah. Cute dog. <laughs> looks like a TV dog. <laughs> yeah, his name would be Skippy or something. Yeah, and he would save somebody's life. I, I think you did. You captured your pet just fantastically. Um, I think you're leaving, accounting for the rule of space with this extra space over here. See, like the negative space over here is really little, but this is greater. Um, except that the dog's actually looking to the right a little bit. So it's a minor nitpick, but I might just tighten that up a little. Feels a little better balanced to me like that. Yeah. Yeah, he's cute. Beautiful detail. Great exposure. Just a little bit, just to get his eyes a little brighter. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. But then, you know what, when you do that, then you bring up the background as well. And the background isn't especially attractive, so... Yeah, we cover that in chapter eight, like selectively bringing up the eyes. Yeah, we do, don't we? Yeah, I'm so just would... being lazy. Yeah. <laughs> Great shot. Yeah, good shot. All right, we have some street photography here, oh. done in color, which is uncon, uh, which is unconventional. Yeah. And right away, one thing that it bothers me about the color. In. Okay, <laughs> is this red back here? Because that was the first thing that my eyes went to, and maybe this blue pole on the red background is compelling, but to me it, it really distracts from what I think is the main subject. I, I don't mind the red, but I do think it draws attention to his eye, because you see the red background and it's like the same color as his eye. And you're, you're, we've decided not to check out his I eye. I don't want to do it because I'm already, <laughs> I already feel nervous about it. Okay. Whew. Should we discuss black and white? You can, but then you don't see that eye anymore. I think they left it in color for a reason. Yeah, but they also bumped up the color. Like it's beyond color. They've they've oversaturated it a little bit. It was a conscious artistic choice. Yeah. And as long as it's deliberate, I support it. I, yeah. I suspect they tried black and white. I like white it too. as is. This guy's yeah. got a great pose. He's actually posing better than most people's models in our group. <laughs> He's like He's so natural. Hire that guy. And chill, so <laughs> Wow, what gorgeous light here. Yeah, that is beautiful light. And really peaceful expression that matches it. It's hard to get a kid to pose so nicely. That's a gorgeous shot. Yeah, that's nice. Um, I, liked the, I liked the centered composition. I feel like there's a little much of the background there, though, don't you think? You could always go square. Oh, you think? I'll give it a shot. You could, if you like the center composition. I feel like there's too much background. That's an option. I actually liked some negative space in this photo. Yeah, good one. I think I was happy. Just a tiny little crop, but other, otherwise, just gorgeous. Great processing on it, too. It feels very natural. And that was taken right. with a 50 millimeter, one four. Oh, was it? Yeah, one of my favorite lenses. Yeah. So versatile. Not that expensive at all. Look at these sassy gals. <laughs> They're cute. Uh, so we have almost a perfect high-key photo here. You can see the corners fade out a little bit, and that's something that, that always ha happens. It's very hard to get a perfect bright white background. We, we have a video about that in Chapter 6. But frankly, often you end up just going in and uh, dodging the darker areas to bring them up. This photo would be great with some fun processing. Yeah, I, I do feel like they're they're kind of doing a campy pose, and go back you could go to, ahead and do the go the back to the previous picture. Yeah. So this effect was made with um, presets, most likely that, or she she dragged sliders herself, but she matched the mood. The colors are muted um, and warm, kind of matches the mood. So now yeah. Let's go back to the other picture. So this picture is technically. Fine, but I think if they wanted to like match their fun mood, they could do something with the filters. Maybe even they're dressed like hippies. Maybe even make the picture look vintage <clears throat> or seventies-ish. Yeah, I totally agree. 
Except for that chick's one fingernail. Um, it's you don't understand fashion. Girls are now painting their ring fingers a different color than the rest of the nails. Really? Why do they do that? Because they're cool. as a girl. They're cool. Just because it's That's cool, why, huh? Yeah. Women are very smart. We always need something new to entertain us. <laughs> well, that's why I always need a new camera. Because I'm smart. That's why. That's why. That you're bored. <laughs> so here's a tiger. That's a, that's a great a picture. Tiger. Now we have to find the hidden dragon. <laughs> it's hidden. <laughs> it's a great, a great light. Eyes are open, which is so rare for these lazy beasts. <laughs> what was rude. It's at 165 millimeters. Yeah. You're dangerously close to this animal. That's a beautiful picture. Yeah, great contrast on it. I feel a little weirded out by the balance, don't you? Is it? I don't know. Yeah, it's no big deal. I, I, I don't know that I can fix it. I just, I guess I feel like I feel a little uncomfortable. But it's a, a great and sharp picture, great light. For a zoo picture, it's just wonderful. Great yeah. job. Wow. Um, Japanese tea gardens. Is this in San Francisco? Well, I, I was wondering that, and we'll probably find out that it's in Japan and then feel really silly. <laughs> there are lots of places that have Japanese tea gardens, so uh, it's hard to say. I was looking for some kind of clue, like figuring out what that building in the background is. I don't is. remember there being buildings in San Francisco. Um... Beautiful picture, great leading, you know, line here that just leads your eye through the picture. Very peaceful. Um, I, I, I would revisit this place under different weather conditions. I think softer light might help convey a more peaceful attitude. Maybe like a even, light though, fog. You know what's difficult about this is that you can see that it looks like it's surrounded by hill. So this would always be kind of in shadow. Yeah. Well, the shadow, it, it's the hard light over here that yeah. I think is inconsistent with the mood of the what picture. Think, I'm not opposed to hard light. Is, oh, it's like noon. You can yeah. see the shadows are right underneath. Yeah, everything. so there's this, this super hard light. I, I think an overcast day, or if it is in San Francisco, just grab a foggy day. I think that would be wonderful. Oh, you're right. This can't be in San Francisco. There's sun. <laughs> we, we didn't see much sun in San Francisco. Um, anyway, so I guess what I'm saying is I love the composition here. The location is just fantastic, but I feel like the mood of the picture is peaceful and the lighting doesn't help support that. So just a bit of constructive feedback, but I think it's a great picture. Feedback, Tony. ISO 100, good settings. Right, it's got some car trails here. Looks good. It looks nice and sharp. I think you did everything right here. Um, ISO 100. Horizon level, Tony? Wow. I feel like you're being a little sarcastic about that. <laughs> but it is. I can tell because look how this pole is nice and vertical. Smart Alec. <laughs> well done. Okay. Cute baby picture. In a blanket and sleeping. Uh, you're the expert on baby photography. I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I know a thing or two. And I'd say that it looks pretty good. It looks like it's in focus. I might just go a little softer with the lighting. I don't know what your your lighting was for this picture, but I prefer natural lighting or like a big soft box or a reflector or something. Um, my only other thing with it is that there are a lot of bright colors competing with the baby. He's wearing an orange and blue striped yeah. shirt and a bright blue blanket. And um, I, I think that's just preference, but I usually try to keep the colors a little bit more natural and muted. I will have a video coming out on this, actually. I just finished it. What, what's happening with that? Where is that video? And, uh, oh, the baby video? Yeah. I'm working on it. You're working on it? <laughs> well, Shlomo needs it. Not needs it, but yeah. No, but we do have a video in chapter six already. I we just have a supplemental video. Black and white, because I think the colors were competing with the baby. Babies are so little and fragile. I like how you say you actually prefer it in black and white, as if you don't regularly prefer everything in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> well, surprise, Whoa, surprise, surprise! Chelsea like prefers it in black and white. <laughs> Gasp. <laughs> <clears throat> that hurt right in yeah it looks nice good job oh I see a lot of these Mohammed hi oh is it Mohammed how do you know because there's a, his little man to oh, oh, oh I didn't see the watermark yeah uh, very cool great 
great shot. Captures a real moment. I like that it's in black and white, actually. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, I like the, the composition and everything about it. The sky up here is just gorgeous. I like the negative space and the kind of square crop that it has. It's a beautiful shot. I, as per usual, I have, I can't even offer anything no, to his pictures anymore. Like yeah. You know, I think there's a little bit of haloing around the edge of this that makes it seem a little unnatural. It's motion blur. Hmm. Something to watch out for. What? No. I'm not going to even say it. <laughs> I... I'm not even gonna. I can't. You go ahead. I am too biased. I am. I just don't like spot color. We we hear. I love spot color, and please oh. send in more spot color photos. Oh, you do. You love them. Yeah. Tell. I, I I'm a big fan of spot color. I think it's the next big thing. <laughs> That's it. That's all you're gonna tell us for a person. <laughs> you send in this picture. Let's go back. I'll compose myself. Um, uh, first, when I look at the picture, all I see is this white umbrella. Yeah, me too. It's I, just way too bright. But I and actually like I don't, the white umbrella. <laughs> that's because you hate the spot color so much. <laughs> it's distracting you from the, the focal point. But if you're interested in the focal point, that's got to go or it's got to be handled in processing in some way. Um, so we just need to, to zoom it in a little bit. Um, if this is the focal point, it's a very, very small part of the picture, which means that can work in some formats. If you're going to be making a 20 by 30 print out of it, that might work. If you're putting it on the web, this picture will be overlooked because it had a very cluttered thumbnail and the subject was a teeny tiny part of it. You just wouldn't see it. <laughs> Anything you'd like to add? Um, I like, I like that it's unusual that you're looking at the person's back and I like the umbrella and it certainly tells a story. I, this isn't the worst spot color I've seen. At least he, he actually selected the Pink Panther properly. Usually I just see like some general splotch of color that, that really gets me. And also I like that this like bright, happy little character is in contrast to this kind of sad, lonely looking person. Hmm. Um, so, you know what, maybe this is the crop then. Like maybe really tight so we can see the juxtaposition there. Because I, I do, I like your idea of it being about the juxtaposition, the juxtaposition, but I didn't get that story from this or even from the wider. And But with that being the story, I would not put any color in the little Ikea thing on the table. Yeah, I noticed it had a trace amount of color. I think that might have just been the way they did the selective color. Um, so if the story is the juxtaposition, I'd crop super tight. I'd get right in there like that because well, this is why I wouldn't though, because when you zoom back, then it gives you the feeling of this person being isolated. There's like no one around them. It's lonelier when you're kind of zoomed back. Hmm. Okay. I, you know, I'm going to do a video on spot color so I can take it down from the inside. <laughs> Beautiful picture, beautiful. great leading line. There's a smudge in the sky. Let's get rid of it. Yeah, that was that was bugging me a little bit too. And I mean, I know it was just part of the scene, but that wasn't a perfect clone. But you get the idea. Um, My only other thing is, I would have focused on the building in the background if I were done. Where is the focal point? Oh, it's in the foreground. It's on the, it looks like it's on the docks right there. Yeah, we don't, we don't have the settings here, unfortunately, but, um, so where did they, yeah, I don't know where they focus for sure. The building doesn't look like it's. In I would say right? they should focus on the buildings. Yeah. So I would say like, look at the, our night photography chapter, because the composition is beautiful. I really like this picture. Um, but if I had to improve something, I'd say to make the building the focal point maybe a longer exposure. Um, but yeah, I adore the composition. I normally try to clean up the color in orange city lights, um, but I, I love the blues that you see here. Is this ice or is it just water? I think it's just water with a, a longer exposure. Yeah, in that case, I might even go longer with it. That's like what I really think blur longer, it, like think, maybe do a couple of minutes. Yeah, I think they'd also get more detail in the building if they did it for longer. 
They mm. might actually have to stack it though, because if they go for too long, then this boat is going to get even blurrier. So yeah. They might stack a few pictures, take um, a picture, a sharp get, picture of yeah, the boat. Yeah, a sharp picture of the boat, and then take a long exposure of the rest. I'm not bothered by the blurriness of the boat. No, not now, but if they did a really long exposure, yeah, yeah, it might right. be worse. Beautiful flower picture. Flower. This is far better than most flower pictures that we see, which are just yeah. kind of snapshots. Um, I'll say that you're controlling the background here, so there's no need to to shoot with a wide open aperture. You know, go ahead and like, give us the whole flower in focus. I don't think the short depth of field is adding anything here. Great. Yeah, nice light. I could see they have cross lighting, or maybe it's just backlit. But either way, the light's gorgeous and nicely done. Goose. Goose. This looks familiar, but maybe we just saw it in the group. It's a nice picture of a goose. Yeah. Gorgeously sharp, beautiful light, okay. nice front lighting, great catch light. It's a perfect goose picture. It's a perfect goose. Might just crop it in a little bit more. Goose. It's okay to center these. You don't have to leave too much space. Geese. Wow. Bill Tucker. That's a this, great shot. Yeah, this is really gorgeous. This reminds me of that crazy bridge in Louisiana. I don't know if that's it, but There's a crazy that's what bridge I think in of. Louisiana? Yeah, I think you might have been asleep when we were driving over. It, it was like 16 miles long or something. Well, it's beautiful. I love that there's... It's not... It's a silhouette, but it's not quite black. You see this haze. What'd you just do? You disagreed with it. I, I disagreed with it, too. I would not touch it. I think Bill Tucker nailed it. Let's just move on. Beautiful. Um... What? I I don't like these trees in the foreground. I do. You do? It adds depth. Oh yeah, I I prefer this flat. Oh. What's it feel like to be wrong? <laughs> Let's see. Let's just experiment with it. Oh no. What's it feeling? I don't know why I thought that was a great place to grab. It's not very smart, is it? No. I actually like the little marshy area, but it was that tree that I just wanted to get rid of, so I'll just... No? No. Better here, you think? See, I like this area. Maybe I should have been a little more close with my clone. Yeah, I think maybe if you... So I think that plus, let's see, a little, like, let's center this so those two bridges create a little more symmetry. What do you think? Better here or better here? I think I like his original. The, the darker silhouettes in the foreground give you depth. Go back to his and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, look at these. This here is completely black because it doesn't have all of the fog in front of it. Yeah. And that's where you're getting some depth. I like that this is black. I like it. Okay. We well, we saw two different way. pictures. It's two different takes, and it's not like yeah. there's a right answer. I mean, you can't be right. Um, but, but this is the right answer in this case. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so looks like we have a mausoleum oh, just whoa, whoa. HDR'd What's up. Going on? <laughs> you know, one thing I try to avoid in HDR is, like, I like the grittiness in the HDR, and I think that's a good good for a building like this, but I don't like a gritty sky. That always feels weird to me, right? Oh, I don't like um, gritty sky. I don't like the... And um, the edge glow. Edge glow, The yeah. haloing, yeah. So I, I would tone that down, but I, I do think HDR is a good choice for this picture. Uh, you might check uh, Chapter 11, the manually blending two exposures video to, to blend the sky in a yes, little more evenly. I was just evenly. thinking that they could go in, you could take the original picture, stack them in Photoshop, and then erase this gritty sky and get a nice smooth sky in the background. I'd cut the jet trails, too. I, I just... So, mm -hmm. I don't know. Just find a distraction from the subject. But otherwise, good. All right. I have a cute picture of a kid. He's got a flower, a great smile, beautiful soft light. We need a higher shutter speed here. Yeah, this kid is, he's wicked fast. And uh, got a little motion blur going on. So, yeah, I'd, I'd double or triple the shutter speed when you're dealing with a, a young superhero like this. I would... Raise the shutter speed and lower the f-stop to get a little blur going on that background. Yeah. It'll get, it would give the picture more depth because then he would pop off of the background. Um, I would also compositionally try to comp 
I, I think the focal point here is the flower and his cute face, no, right? No, what? It's his whole getup. Look at his great boots and his little shovel. There's a whole story here. <laughs> okay. You, you don't think any getting closer or cropping would help at all? No, I like this whole thing. You like this and Let this grass? All right. Move over, handsome. I got it. Let's see. All right. First of all, this is a pale child. So let's bring down the highlights so that we see a little more detail on his face. And then I'm going to warm it up a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is just show you what would happen. What was that button? Uh, oh, so that you can see where I'm selecting. Let me make my brush bigger. This is really rough. I would usually do this in Photoshop where I have more control. But just to show you what it's like when you blur the background a bit. I'm going to select this. And then... Oh, and then I'm going to press O so you can see what I'm doing. Why would it do that? I would not normally do it using these, but you can just see that if it's... I, that didn't come out well at all, actually. No, Lightroom doesn't have great blurring tools. That's one of those things you got to bring it into Photoshop for. I should start to... Maybe that's a good video for you, how to blur the background. Yeah, but... It just would separate him from the background a bit. Cute picture. I like that picture. Swans. Oh. Why'd you do that? That's Sorry. wrong. I had the wrong tool selected. Swans scare me. They're so beautiful and cruel. Yeah, they're, they're the, their appearance is totally a lie. They're they the, are complete jerks. They're the supermodels of the animal world. <laughs> I'm going to brighten it up a little bit. I want some of this to be white. Even just blown out. What? Okay. I like this picture. Yeah, I don't. I don't think much has to be done with it. Thanks. Yeah, great picture. And you got two birds in focus, which is pretty hard and to do. They arrange themselves in a really nice way. Yeah, if you photograph them long enough, they'll pose nicely for you. Wow. See, I, oh, I love the long exposures at night. Like, look what it does with the clouds. This is a combination of a, a wide angle lens and long exposure. And you get these like crazy clouds over here. It's, it's just a great effect. I love the clouds and I love the reflection. Yeah. So we have an off level horizon. We'll fix that first. <laughs> uh, we'll go back a little bit. It's a bugaboo. And you were saying that the picture is too dark. And I, I would agree. I like to see those clouds nice and bright. Now, I know it's a night photo, but it doesn't necessarily have to be dark, and that's not going to look great on most people's monitors anyway. They'll just kind of skip it. Um, actually, I wish I could get the clouds brighter and the buildings not quite as bright. You could in Photoshop. Yeah, you could in Lightroom, People always too, say but... you can do stuff in Lightroom. I mean, you could. It's just not as good. Uh, beautiful re reflection, nice composition. I love the you you did made the right choice with the symmetry here. Yeah, I like that. I love the reflection. Really nice shot. It is. I like that. Good color on that too. Ooh, All right, ooh. you filled the frame with a peacock. Great compositional choice. Uh, though I might want to see it in the left I third. Think I would fill it even more. Oh, this is your crop. Fill it even more. What did you mean? Let me show you what I had in mind. I would make it completely abstract. Oops. Maybe even make it square. And then I would hang that on my wall. I see that. That that is an interesting choice. Look at those colors. I like this picture a lot. I'll go back to a different crop. So we can see. I didn't like the ground and his feet are overexposed, but everything else looks good. Today. <sighs> yeah, you're right. And we, in the very least, we need to crop out or clone out the bands that he has on his leg because he doesn't need to be wearing jewelry. Like you got too many accessories as it is. <laughs> Quit with the peacocking. Over the top. 
I like this this picture. I wonder how pissed off peacocks are that we call when like a douchebag guy wears too much jewelry, we call it peacocking. We must be like, hey, quit it. Yeah, don't but have do you that. ever been around a peacock? It's like, we get it. You're beautiful. <laughs> get out of my way. They're always following you with their feathers open. Yeah. I'm not attracted to that. Really cute. It is. Um, though I think this is the interesting part of the picture, so I know we end up cropping a lot, but I feel like there's just too much in this picture. These are our guys over here. They're just being adorable. Let's press I and see if it works. Nothing. You can cycle it a couple of times. Yeah, I don't know why. Sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't. I was going to say, because I love that this picture is backlit, except I think they needed the, a little exposure compensation to get more light on the ducks. Yeah, you'd want it a little bit brighter. No, it doesn't hurt. Get a little more contrast here. Um, yeah, in the case of this, when you have the light shining through, you want that to be nice and bright, just about touching the right side. But good job. This reminds me of uh, most cats I've known. He just looks pissed off. <laughs> I think it's cool. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, I was going to crop it, but I think I also like the overall scene. It almost looks like they set up a little country set for him <laughs> with the rusted bucket here and the like railroad tie uses a step. I, I think it's beautiful. He looks like he could really beat you up, though. I've had bad experiences with cats, if you can't tell. I think he would kick your butt. His eyes aren't quite in focus, though, so I would make sure that that was the focus point. Yeah, I don't... Because this seems sharp. I don't... Maybe his head was moving. Maybe it's a shutter speed issue, yeah, but... Maybe shutter speed. Take lots of pictures, delete most of them. Um, otherwise, I, I love the scene. It's almost monochromatic, no distractions. Yes. I like it. Nice and peaceful. Whoa, a little Charlie Brown Christmas tree action going on here. Uh, beautiful, nice composition, perfect exposure, is nice and bright. Yeah, what can you do but make that white just nice and bright? I like it. I like that it's simple, it's almost monochrome naturally. This is like natural spot color. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, it works. I like it. Oh, Aww. beautiful cardinal picture. Cute. I think I saw this one in the group, but just perfect. Looks like they... Um, add a little fill flash, even. Yeah, that looks like fill flash. Look at the um, ghosting that's happening on the snowflakes. Yeah. It's, it doesn't detract at all. I think it make, makes it look great. has a lot of clarity. There probably wasn't a lot of clarity before the flash with, on a snowy day like that. It's a great picture. Um, yeah, we can say great pose, great light. I love animals doing something in the snow. Snow collected here. Even the branch is pretty. Yeah. And matches the bird's colors. Female cardinals are one of the most beautiful birds, I think. Here we have a, a chickadee. Black cap chickadee. Probably back black cap, A little cap, bit yeah. underexposed. Let's bring up the shadows and see if we can see his face a little better. Yeah, they're a real challenge because, you know what, the whole picture is underexposed, I think. Um with a black and white bird, you want the whites to be just touching the right side of the histogram so that you capture as much detail as possible in the shadows. Often I'll even shoot raw so I can recover a little bit of the highlights. I'll, I'll shoot raw and overexpose it a little bit. Um, you missed focus just a little bit. Your camera focused up here. And the way you solve that is you take, take pictures. 10 pictures, refocus, take 10 pictures, refocus, take 10 pictures. Because no camera is perfect. It doesn't matter what system you have. Um, Great, beautiful. Keep at it. Yeah, I like the background. Chickadees are a good subject because they're not shy at all. They'll let you, you could touch them sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> our daughters manage Madeline, to pet them, yeah. Our daughter Madeline like, feeds them from a stick and then touches them. Um, a little bird whisper. This is funny because my first thought was this needs focus stacking, but I think this is the exact type of flower that I used in the focus stacking video in chapter 11. Yeah, a Gerber daisy. Yeah, so... Uh, I would do focus stacking here because this is so much of the fo foreground and it's out of focus and that distracts me right away. It's um, a but nice the light picture, here though. is beautiful. I love the water drops. Yeah, it's a beautiful picture. In fact, it's the same flower with same the color. water droplets that I sprayed on it. Yeah, and the same I, I feel like they were watching the focus stacking video but then didn't do the focus stacking. They were like, forget you, man. <laughs> wow, this is gorgeous. That's beautiful. Oh, man, Look these mountains are perfect. Wave. Yeah, you know, sometimes we go for a long exposure and smooth these out, but I love this focal point. It balances this larger building, over, uh, larger building this larger mountain over here perfectly. Uh, you know, the 
only thing I can think to do is maybe to make it a panorama because I don't know that I like all that stuff in the foreground. Um, I'm just trying to decide where the crop might be. I don't know that that's the right crop. I, like, I don't know if this I is like going to work. I like some of the stuff in the foreground. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't hate it. I, I like it. My first reaction is, wow, I love the shot. Yeah, I, I was just trying shot. to do something constructive it's to beautiful. it. beautiful. Maybe it needs the exposure needs to be up a tiny bit. Yeah, I was looking at that histogram too. It does look a little bit dark. At the same time, I don't want to blow it out too much. I still want this That's to be bright. Yeah. I love the background. I think I, yeah, I do like it a little bit brighter. Gorgeous. Really Great composition. Beautiful. I want to go there. You leveled that horizon like crazy. What is the sea dog? <laughs> I am. A, uh, uh, I can't stop looking at the reflection. Yeah, <laughs> it me it's up. a beautiful picture. But once you see this reflection, that's all you can see. Well, it looks more like a dog because his reflection looks like his ear to me. Yeah, but it looks like like Kerberos. What's that? <laughs> the three-headed dog that guards the gates of hell. He's no. It's only a two-headed dog. Cute. I know. I like it. Yes. Beautiful. Just, for, I'm just I, I still can't unsee that reflection. All right. Great leading line. Walking beautiful way. sky. Oh, really? Oh, I like the colors here. I think the sky really makes it pop. Oh, I like that too. It's about the architecture. Yeah, you know what? I like that too. And um, I wouldn't even mind uh, seeing those clouds a little bit brighter. And I maybe I'll drop the blues just to provide a little more contrast in the sky. I would up the shadows a little bit. Oh, really? I guess it depends how you're presenting it, but you want to see good. more detail of and that. And then a little clarity. Yeah. Alright, so here's That's the black and white version. Here's the original. I like them both. They're, they're different. Um, black and white would certainly be traditional for this, but uh, gorgeous lines. I love the leading line here, the contrast yeah, between the nice gorgeous curves and these straight lines. Great eye and, and great time of day too. You know what could, would be something to try is to do this shot, put it on a tripod with a neutral density filter and let it go for like a minute or two minutes on a yeah. partly cloudy day like this. So the this, this sky, the clouds become all nice and blurred. It can make it kind of surreal. Something to try. I like old trucks too. This one, me too. This guy called the mother of all catfish. Yeah, that's a pretty <laughs> big catfish. I've seen bigger. It makes me think they should paint eyes on the windshield, like in cars. Well, I think you're asking a bit much. All right, so good catch. Cool truck. Nice symmetrical composition. I wouldn't mind seeing a little more negative space on the on either side of it. Um, it is a very contrasty picture and. Yeah, I think maybe a little more shadows might be in order. Bring up the clarity of smidgen. Too far. Oh, I'm sorry. You said a smidgen. I, I went two smidgens. I, you went at least three smidgens. <laughs> that looks nice. Good one. Um, well, this is a nice portrait. But the first thing that I thought is that um, her... Her lipstick is so bright, I think that it looks a little bit overexposed even. Maybe yeah, it's just my might, imagination. I might down the reds a little bit. He might have actually cranked it up to make it pop a little bit more. Oh. Uh, I don't know, or maybe... Maybe she had a special lip light. So I, I toned that down a little bit. Um, and you're right, I, I did find it distracted from the rest of her face yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but now it looks nice. I, I think it's a, a great shot. Uh, I'm tr struggling to provide any constructive criticism. The lighting like seems the background. really nice. Her the eyes background, are really the processing lit. are really nice. I, I'm, uh, these little branches, I might clone them out. Uh, but I don't, I don't have a good, any good constructive feedback. I might crop a little more deliberately into the forehead if you're going to crop into the forehead so it doesn't look accidental. But it's a great shot. Yeah, it doesn't really shot. need anything else. Backlighting there. Look at the nice rim lighting. Yeah. Great choice putting the sun behind her. Made her hair really pop too. That could yeah. have all disappeared. All I can do is just list stuff that I like about the picture. Nice. Who sent us these headphones, Charles? 
because I love them. I know. Those are actually mine, and you and Justin keep stealing them. <laughs> What's the brand, though? They're Mees. M-E-Z-E. -E. Yeah. Check out M-E-Z-E -E headphones. They're very cool. They're, they're wood. They're not all wood, but they they're sound, coated in wood to look nice. They sound better than my full-size headphones. <laughs> yeah. They have full-size headphones, and they have little in-earbuds like this, but I love them. All right. Uh, we have landscape going for symmetry here with this nice reflection. Beautiful detail. Unbelievable clarity. Uh, That's nice. I like the composition. Yeah. I, I think if I... I think he did an excellent job. It's in focus. It's a nice composition. Um, if he wanted to go a little Ansel Adams with it, he could go black and white. If he wanted to go a little larger than life with it, he could do... Um, like a neutral density filter and a little longer exposure to get some movement in the clouds. Movement is always nice in a picture. Yeah, I don't think it necessarily needs anything. I wouldn't mind seeing a llama. Like an, yeah, a llama here. I was thinking maybe like a little kid taking a running leap into the pond. Um, don't you think if you had a foreground subject? I guess if you happen to be doing a portraiture or you want to do something fun with a foreground. This would be a great spot for it, but I don't think it necessarily needs anything. No, I don't Alama think it necessarily cool, needs anything. I'm just trying to up his game. Um, these are not great blue herons, but there's oh, something right. very similar. Uh, good shot. I can't zoom in any further, but every, everything about it looks good. Uh, you definitely could have gone with a slower shutter speed. Well, I don't know how fast they were moving, but you might have been able to get that ISO down a little bit. F10 was a good choice because you're dealing with two birds. you got to yeah. crank up that f-stop number and try to get them both in focus, but we great did, shot. And we did this picture already, so we are done. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you soon.